In this video, I will show you my absolute favorite AI writing tools for blogging, SEO, and affiliate marketing. And I'm not only going to list those products, but I will show you how to use those and how not to use those and what's realistic and what's not. And on top of all of this, I will also show you what kinds of AI tools and strategies you should avoid. So make sure to watch all the way until the end. And by the way, you can find free trials to each and every single one of these products by clicking the links in the description. So the first AI based writing tool, and this is actually my favorite one, is called Grammarly. You can basically just sign up for free and you have this content editor that you can use where you can basically just head over to app.grammarly.com and then click on new. And I will actually show you how it works. So you can just copy paste text here and it will fix these issues for you by highlighting those. And you can actually see these correct spellings and basically these instructions on how to make this correct here on the right hand side. But to be brutally honest, I never use it this way <clears throat> because there is a much better way for you to use it. And that's by heading to grammarly.com slash browser slash Chrome, because this is a Google Chrome extension. And this is where the value is at, because this means that once you install it to your Google Chrome, assuming that you're using one, you can use this tool automatically in every single web page you visit. So for example, right now, and here I'll demonstrate to you how it actually works. So right now I'm writing a blog post on my WordPress editor. And as you can see, I have pasted here, or copy pasted here a chapter, and it has these red underlinings. Well, these are all the typos and mistakes that I had accidentally made to this piece of content. So now what I can actually do is I can just hover over this and click on the fix to fix this. As you can see, it's very quick and very handy. Now this piece of text is perfect. This is one of the favorite parts and this works anywhere. As I said, because this is now a Chrome extension, I can actually activate or deactivate it for any page that I like to and it works everywhere. So now I'm on the medium editor. I can do this here and I can even do this in my Gmail, for example. So if I'm sending, for example, a partnership email or some kind of a sponsorship email, I can just click on these red little suggestions to make the text better. So this is the powerful Grammarly that I have been using basically throughout the years that I have been a blogger. So I think that ever since I started, that was like back in 2020, late 2020. So I activated it and I have never deactivated it ever since. And the only issue I have with this product is that it is not perfect. And it's sometimes also, although I'm not sure I can just right now demonstrate it to you, but it's also doing these suggestions. So it might flag some kind of a sentence, for example, make it look like this, and then you might have a yellow underlining, and then it might suggest you something, but then when you click on it, it will actually show you that it's a pro feature and you can't fix it on, until you pay for the product. So that's something I don't like. And they have been pushing the pro version because I think that they have noticed that people use this free version all the time, but yeah. This is a huge time saver. Saves me like tens or even hundreds of hours per year. Then another awesome AI powered writing tool is called Hemingway app. So you can just head over to HemingwayApp.com and paste your text here and it will give you all sorts of suggestions as well. I think this was something that I used basically th during the entire first year as a blogger because I had a tendency of using like this kind of passive voice. So new policies were introduced, the changes were implemented. And this is wrong, you should always use active voice. So for example, instead of saying new policies were introduced last year, you should say the authorities introduced new policies last year. So it should always be more descriptive and not just like a generic active voice thing. And here you can do the same, pretty much the same what you could do with Grammarly. So you can click on one of these issues and it will show you a suggestion and this is by the way a generic one so it's just showing what passive voice means and you can also use the ai to fix this and this is not the only use case for it so it will do a lot more than just pointing out passive voice so it can for example if you have a sentence that is super long 
it will also flag that one as well. So you might have, let's try something. Yeah. So as you can see, now it's showing that this sentence is way too long. So it's saying all these things without having a pause. So this will show that, okay, this is probably something that the reader cannot understand because it's such a long sentence. This is the kind of stuff you can do on Hemingway's app. But of course, one thing you need to keep in mind is that you shouldn't take this like something that is set in stone. So if Hemingway suggests to you that your sentence is hard to read, it doesn't automatically mean that you should get rid of it. You can try to come up with a different solution. So you can try to split the sentence. For example, here we had four logical groups. So we can definitely add a dot after every single one of these like sentence parts. But if the sentence requires to be long or if it has to be long, then it has to be long. You can just leave it as it is because it's not always like a value add to break your sentences into like five words. It makes it sound very boring and robotic. So this is not rocket science, this is not something you have to follow blindly, but it's something that will give you an idea of your writing and how hard it is to read, how much passive language you use, what are the weakening sentences or weakening words that you're using, are there some complex words that you could replace with simpler alternatives and such. So especially if you're just getting started, I would highly recommend you doing this. I, I think I used it for an entire year. And now I have developed my own kind of writing style, so I don't, I no longer need it. I no longer use passive voice. I no longer write super long sentences. But yeah, definitely give it a shot. And this is, by the way, free. So of course, there is also a pro feature. But when I started using this, this was fully free. There were no AI writing features. This was just useful as it is. So the fact that you can just paste text here, it will give you a grade and show all the mistakes. I think that's more than enough for you to nail your writing. Then last but not least, we have this tool called Content Shake AI. So instead of just fixing your writing, this one writes blog posts from complete scratch. So all you really need to do is tell it what to write and it will get the job done. And I have actually made a comprehensive review as a blog post and as a video. And I have left links to those in the description so you can find my like complete opinion and a complete showcase of this product. But for now, it's just important to understand that this is a tool that you can use as a content assistant to create a blueprint for your blog post. Although it claims that it can write these blog posts from start to finish, you still need to do heavy editing on it. But that being said, let me show you how it works. So you can head over to this page. And by the way, you will find links to all these pages in the description too. Then you can just sign up and create an article and you can use your own idea. For example, we can do, let's say, best productivity tips at home. This is something that I had done in the past. So let's just click on start writing. And you can set some target keywords, word counts, stuff like that. So for example, if you want to have specific tips mentioned in this post, you can add them here in the keyword section. You can do a super long post if you want to. And then you can also use the default generic voice. And by the way, you can also create this kind of an expert voice for yourself which basically happens such that you copy paste text from your blog post to the content check AI editor. And I actually show you how to do this in the complete review, by the way. And then the AI analyzes that for a while. Then it creates a unique voice for this application that sounds and looks exactly like you. But yeah, then if I click on create article, then the AI starts to write the blog post. And this is completely unique original text that didn't exist prior. And this will take a couple of minutes because the blog post is super long. So I'm actually going to save you some time by heading over to this My Content section where I have done this already. So for example, we can check this post here. So here, for example, we have a post that is 1,300 words in length. And as you can see, it has all the images. It has even the citations to this, like the photographers of these images. You have all the formatting in place. You have a lot of text here. This is a super complete and comprehensive guide that shows exactly like these kind of tips and tricks to improve productivity while working at home. And this is epic, but I hate this for the party. This is not an article that you can just publish as it is. Because as I've said many times on this channel, and actually I have made a separate video on how to write a 
blog post that actually ranks on Google and that actually gives you good results. You need to do a whole bunch more than just use these like generic images and use this generic language without showing your experience and expertise on the topic. So for example, if you write a blog post on best productivity tips at all, you can use this as a blueprint. So probably everything that is said here makes sense, but you need to show yourself in the action. So for example, if you say that ergonomics matter, you should show yourself using different kinds of desks. You should use different kinds of mouses or whatever it is that makes your ergonomic future better. So yeah, you need to show experience and expertise in every single one of your blog posts. So yeah, this gives you the kind of a blueprint. So if you write a blog post on best productivity tips on a distant look, this it is what it should look like. So it has a bunch of images and it has a lot of tips and short chapters. But on a closer look, you need to make sure that the text makes sense, that the images are actually useful and that they support the content and that they belong to you so that you don't use these generic images that everybody else has used. And this is the real way to make it stand out. So just keep this in mind. If you use AI, it's not something you can use to do automation. It is just an assistant and it can save you some minutes or even hours from your week, but the AI is not going to replace you. And now let's talk about the reality of using AI as a blogger. So I've been experimenting with AI for almost like three and a half, almost four years. And I was using GPT-3 already back in 2020 when it only had like a couple of thousand users. I was using Grammarly and stuff like that. And I've noticed one thing, the AI can only save you so much time. So I would say that, well, all these companies are pushing that narrative that these AI tools will save you like, like 90% of the time. But in reality, I would say that the AI can save you like 5% of the time. So if you used to work like 50 hours a week, perhaps after you activate these AI tools, you can only work for 47 hours per week or something like that. But it's not going to replace you. It's not going to do your job. So you need to put in the time and effort and also the fact that everyone else has these tools will also make the competition more fierce. It's just streamlining the workflows a bit and it's increasing the productivity, but yeah, it's definitely not going to replace you and it's definitely not going to save you that much time. So just keep that in mind. So then also I want to talk about these AI tools you should avoid. So of course I'm not going to give you any names, but basically, if there are any tools or strategies that promise you to maximize your revenue by automating stuff. So if you have some secret AI prompts, if you have some kind of SEO AI tools that will filter your or fill your blog posts in with keywords and build links or do outreach or whatever, that's complete garbage. That is only there to take your money. So please do not fall for that. And in fact, I would say that most of the AI reviews, most of the product recommendations you're going to hear, most of the stuff I see on the internet is complete garbage and it's only there because of the wow effect of the AI. So people are thinking that this AI thing is the new revolution in the content creation space already and it's taking over and, and people are outsourcing 90% of the tasks to AI, <laughs> but it's none like that. In fact, I have seen that I get the best results when I'm not using AI when I write. So that's just something you need to keep in mind. So the only way I use AI currently is that I have the Grammarly activated and that's it. So I don't use ChatGPT. I don't use that Hemingway app anymore. And I also don't use Content Shake anymore because I have just figured out a content creation workflow that is much faster when I'm doing it from complete scratch because then I don't have to do all the editing. I don't have to do all the proofreading. I don't have to do all the fact checking. I don't have to worry about plagiarism. And most importantly, I get to provide actual value to my audience. So instead of just rephrasing everything with AI or summarizing these top 10 search results on Google with AI, I can actually pour in my unique takes, opinions, thoughts, and stuff like that, which is exactly what the audience wants and which is exactly what makes these blog posts successful. So please use AI with care. Don't forget to experiment with it and don't forget to follow the news and channels like mine, but please don't try to automate everything with AI. 
it can only save you 5% of your time.